All right, so as I just said, uh, from this you know phase plane alone that we did by hand, it's kind of hard to tell what the stability of the second equilibrium point is over here, and whether or not trajectories are gonna go towards it, away from it, or just kind of circle it indefinitely, at least from this kind of level of a picture that we are able to sketch by hand. So we're gonna move to this tool called P-Plane, which uh, I'll put on Canvas, a link where you can go download this. It's just a little Java application that runs on your computer. And it basically has uh, three major windows here. So let me maybe hide this one first. Okay, so it has this window, which is kind of the first one that you'll, that you'll open up, where it has X, and this is supposed to be an apostrophe, so like X prime, and then y prime, so it has bot for two uh, derivatives. So you can call it x, you could call it y, you could call it whatever variable you want here. On the right here, you type the differential equation, right? So here our equations were x minus 0.001 xy and 0.001 xy minus y. So I type those in there. I don't need to use asterisks or anything. Um, it just recognizes multiplication like that. You could also use parameters here, right? I could call this a is 0.001. And I could replace this with an A and an A. Okay, so I could, you know, put A, B, C, D there, have a bunch of parameters here and kind of play with these uh, from this spot here. Uh, these four things here just define the window, right? So I set it to uh, pretty big windows because I, I kind of know where the null clients are already. But if you didn't know where they were, then you'd have to kind of have it plot the null clients and then change the window to, to find out where it should be. Okay, so, so once you have your, your system in place, your window set, you hit graph phase plane, and you go over to this window on the right. So here's your equations again in the top left. Here's x versus y, the phase plane. And there's lots of options here, um, but I guess you can't see any of them in this uh, tool. But, but basically, you know, it has a toolbar at the top, and you want to go to, uh, uh, what is it? Solution and you can have it plot the null clients. So usually that's not checked. So you check it and then it plots the null clients and it usually plots the uh, X null clients in red, the Y null clients in yellow. So I did blue and red, but you know, this is gonna be different colors, right? And you can have it plot the arrows along those null clients, just like we just did, right? So here we have those down arrows on the left here, like I just showed uh, when we computed this by hand. We have the up arrow, the left, the right, and the right arrows. Okay, so this is exactly the arrows that I computed by hand. So that's all it's doing is just checking, you know, what the sign of the derivatives are at various points along the null clines, because along this null cline here, right, this is a y, sorry, this is an x null cline, so there's no flow in x, there's only flow in y. And here it's pointing down, so the flow is down from these null clines. Over here it's up, so the flow is up in those null clines. If you uh, go into the options. So it usually comes default. I turned this off just so I could show this picture. Um, but if you go into the direction field settings under options, you can have it plot arrows, lines, or no lines. And this will plot all these direction arrows. So these are the ones that I kind of sketched by hand, but it does it by checking the you know derivative of X and Y at a single point. And then doing that for you know every point in this window. So if I add in these arrows, um, I have to turn off this one. But now I have these arrows, which are my direction field arrows, or my direction arrows in the face plane. So at every point in this graph, let's say at this point, it calculates you know, that dx dt is slightly positive, dy dt is negative, and it plots an arrow pointing in that direction. Okay, And then from this uh, direction field, you can see, yeah, over here, this is clearly an unstable point, right? Because if I start a solution near it, I move away from it in forward time. So another thing you can do is you can go to options, solution direction, and usually both is the default. You want to change that to forward um, so that you can get only the forward time solution. You can also solve it in backwards time, but that's kind of not really what we want to think about here. Right? If I start close to this Equilibrium point, I move away. So this is unstable. What happens if I start close to the other equilibrium point, right? Let's say I start right here. Well, I actually end up getting a nice circular trajectory, right? So uh, this is what's called, you know, a cycle, right? Or a closed orbit, where I am circling 
this equilibrium point, but I'm neither getting closer to it or further away from it. I'm just kind of staying on some fixed uh, cycle around it. And so what you see is the way these arrows are lined up is no matter, you know, once we're a certain distance to this point, uh, we're always going to get a different orbit around that point. Okay. And so now it's helpful to kind of use this other uh, tool that this has, which is the ability to plot these solutions versus time. Right. So here, this is plotted in the phase plane, but we really, you know, these are X and Y are variables that are changing over time. So let's open up this other one and it'll kind of show us what these solutions look like as just time series, right? Or kind of what you would expect a variable to, to be measured in. So let me open this one up here. Um, no, that's not the right one. Let me open this up. Solution. So you would go up to um, graph and then both X, Y, and T is the option. And then it says select the solution curve for the new graph. So we'll pick one of these and it will plot that over time as opposed to X versus Y. So let's grab this one here. And then let me make sure that this thing is grabbing it. There we go. Grab that. Okay. So you can see here in blue is X and in Y, sorry, in red is my Y. So this here is exactly this trajectory, right? The one that was circling my equilibrium point, plotted versus time. So you can see that X and Y are both going up and down, kind of like sinusoid waves. Waves, And you can see here that the prey, which are X, are leading the predators. So what this means is that the prey are growing, 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 and then the predators are like, oh, there's lots of prey, we can eat these and we can start growing too up into the point where there's more predators or, you know, there's enough predators to start making the prey decline in population. So then the prey decline, the predators keep growing until there's not enough food because the prey level is so low. So then the predators start to decline. But now because the predators are declining, the prey are able to grow again. And then the predators stop declining because the prey are at a high enough level. So the predators start growing again and it just kind of cycles like this. So they're kind of chasing each other. They're chasing each other's population levels as these kind of delayed, you know, cyclic kind of solutions here, these delayed periodic solutions where there's a delay between the peak of predators and the peak of prey, which is kind of this, this lag time where the prey, the prey are re really leading this kind of pattern here. And the predators are, are sort of chasing their numbers down, but then they die off. So then they, they build back up again. Okay, we can plot just one of these. So this is X, Y, both over here on the right. So I can just plot the X, right? So this would just be, you know, X versus time, right? So if this is just um, a single differential equation, you know, this would all be all you'd be interested in. But in a single differential equation, you would never be able to get nice oscillations like this, at least from this kind of linear system. And then for Y, right, we just look at Y alone. It's also this nice periodic solution, okay? If I plot both of them together, you can kind of see how they interact. And so both of these correspond to um, this curve here where you're circling around. So if I'm thinking about this here, right, the uh, prey X are at kind of a low level and then they increase up to here and then they start to decrease and then they increase and then they decrease, right? So that's going up and down and up and down as you go left and right in the phase plane. Same thing for the predators, right? If I start here, my predators are Y, right? My Y goes down, then it comes back up, then it goes back down, then it comes back up, then it goes back down, right? So it's going down, up, down, up as we move up and down along this cycle in the phase plane, okay? We can also visualize, uh, you know, what does this population over here look like? All right, so let's grab um, this one here instead. And let me put that there and let me switch it over in my viewer. You can grab this one. Great. So in this case, uh, if you look here, it looks like we kind of got sucked into a point where the predators have died off. Right? So in red, the predators have died off. And then now that the predators are all gone, right? they're staying at zero, 
the prey are allowed to just grow exponentially. That's kind of what's happening when we started too close to this extinction equilibrium. Right? So it's another type of trajectory that comes out of the same system, but is very different than this sort of cyclic predator-prey oscillations. Okay. And so, you know, you can use this tool to help you analyze these systems. Um, it can do lots of cool things. Uh, let me close this one again. Right, so if I look at this one, um, there's even a spot where you can ask it to find an equilibrium point, right? So if you look up at solution, find the equilibrium point, you can click near it, and it will tell you the stability. So it says that this is, uh, well, it tells you that it's it's not stable or unstable. It's kind of an obscure point here. But if I check the other one, um, then it tells me that it's a saddle point or a different type of unstable points. We won't go into saddles and centers and all this stuff, so maybe this stuff isn't as helpful. But if you're interested in it, you can look more into this, and you know the tools are here at your disposal if you want to use them, okay? But you know, for the purposes of this kind of short course in modeling, um, just being able to understand this massive picture here, right? What do all these arrows mean? How do these translate into these X and Y time series? Um, you know, just being able to make sense of that is 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 quite difficult, and and you should be proud of yourself if if you're able to do that. Okay, cool. So um, I'll stop this video here because I think you know the next thing to do would just be to do a different example and look at it both by hand um, and also uh, using this tool here.